All right, moving on with a look at what's grabbing headlines in the French papers today. And yesterday, papers were focusing on the latest unemployment figures we've just been talking about in business. Uh, Flo, uh, the number of job seekers increasing once again last month. I mean, this is something that Francois Hollande a very long time ago said he was going to reverse. And that just doesn't seem to be happening. It doesn't seem to be happening now. But there is reason for hope uh, in the future. Not quite yet. Uh, let's take a look at the front page of Les Echos, the business paper. Uh, they're focusing on a report that was commissioned by the Ministry of Labor that looks at the horizon in 2022, so seven years from now. And you can see here, Lisa Kuh, they got a sneak peek at this report, and they say that actually the horizon looks quite promising. The report predicts that unemployment will be about 8%, so in seven years' time. So pretty good, a uh, long, long way away from what we're seeing these days. Why the major change? Well, Lisa Kuh says there's going to be a massive wave of baby boomers that are going to retire, and that's going to open up the job market. Um, other papers also making some predictions about the job market as well, some massive changes. Massive changes to come in actually what jobs people are going to have. Uh, that's the Libération that takes a closer look. It's actually a funny twist because not only are baby boomers going to open up jobs as they retire, they're also going to create jobs because of their needs, uh, specifically jobs related to old age. Uh, you can read about it here uh, in Libération. There's going to be an increase in demands for, say, uh, service jobs at home, care, nursing, uh, etc. So you can see here Liberation's take on things. They say that old age is actually a good career for the future. OK, very interesting uh, insights there from those predictions. But I have to say, it still doesn't seem like a very good uh, report for François Hollande and the government if they're really just sort of relying on age and the passage of time <laughs> to right, improve the baby employment boom, figures. Uh, that's right, that baby boom effect isn't going to kick in quite yet. So no. in the meantime, papers are still focusing What's on... What's going to happen until that does happen? Absolutely. Le Figaro, as you can imagine, the conservative paper, very critical of the government for these latest unemployment figures that came out uh, yesterday. You can see the front page here saying, the problem is that there are so many reforms that the government hasn't tried yet. Uh, now, in its editorial uh, Le Figaro says unemployment policy in France has been a failure for the past 30 years. Mm. So Le Figaro is critical of the socialist government, but also previous governments as well. Uh, according to Le Figaro, the problem is that governments, both from the right and from the left, have only dealt with unemployment in a social way. Uh, Le Figaro says that what's necessary is to treat unemployment in an economic way. So what does that mean? Well, uh, Le Figaro says this means carrying out a deep reform to the labor market uh, here in France. Basically, it's too expensive, it's not flexible enough. Uh, and so you can see here, Le Figaro is saying that what we need uh, is to reboot the system. We need to change the software. It's a very rigid system, isn't it? A lot of people have been talking about how we need to look to Germany, uh, where they had big uh, reforms in the last few years. Perhaps we will maybe see those coming. Uh, we're going to stay in the business world for our next story. Now, this is a very thorny issue indeed, particularly if you're a lady. They're talking about the gender pay gap. Are you paid less than your male colleagues? The answer is probably, isn't it? The, including here in France. Including here in France, Where exactly. it is illegal. It's illegal. It's less. been illegal since last year, exactly. Now, you, let's take a look at Le Parisien. They're focusing on the fact that old habits die hard. That's what they're uh, focusing on their front page. Because as you were saying, last year, and so in 2014, a law was voted against uh, this pay gap between men and women. Uh, but it's a major task to fill in that gap, according to Aujourd'hui en France, Le Parisien. Despite the law men are still paid more than women. And actually, Le Parisien takes a closer look at the stats, and they're quite depressing, I must say. Perhaps <laughs> I'm saying that because I'm a lady. But the pay gap is 10% on average uh, in most jobs and up to nearly 25% for a CEO job. So quite a significant gap there. It's very uh, hard to sort of quantify, though, isn't it, I guess? Because you could say, well, this person puts in more extra overtime without asking for pay. Or absolutely. Not it's often, very hard to measure. And it's hard to measure, and often it's a secret as well. So yeah. that's, what's, that's what's tricky about it as well. But what, what's important about this law is that if companies don't put in plan a put in place a plan to fix the, the, the gap, well, they're fined. But uh, according to a lot of people, the fine isn't really enough because up to now, only 48 companies have had their wrists slapped by this new law. So not a lot of uh, companies. And they've, had to be, they've been fined on average 0.7% of their total payroll. But there's one MP who wants to take things further. He's interviewed in Le Parisien. His mm -hmm. name is Julien Bayou. Uh, he's from the Green Party. Now, he's filed an official complaint to get the names of these companies published because for now it's confidential. They, they pay a fine, but their names aren't made public. Uh, now, his, uh, his, his 
idea is that if these companies are on a list, some sort of a named blacklist, and shamed. named and shamed, well, perhaps that'll encourage more companies to fill in the gap. Very interesting indeed. I think it's uh, an issue that a lot of people around the world are looking for a solution to, aren't they? Uh, we're going to move on now to uh, a political story and a family that we talk about a lot here on the Press Review. We're talking about the Le Pen family of the National Front. Now, its founder, Jean-Marie Le Pen, he's got himself into a bit of hot water. There are some allegations that he's had a, a secret bank account in Switzerland. That's not a very right. popular issue here Not in a very popular issue and not a very popular man either. Uh, Mediapart, the uh, investigative website, has come up with the story yesterday. So as you can imagine, it's just starting to get a buzz here. This is the article that everyone's focusing on. It talks about Jean-Marie Le Pen's hidden money. Now, according to this article, he held a bank account in Switzerland via a trust overheld by his butler, uh, overseen by his butler, rather. Now, the account contained allegedly 2.2 million euros, including 1.7 million euros in gold bars and coins. So <gasps> quite a treasure chest for uh, Jean-Marie Le Pen. Gosh, some amazing details there. I'm sure that's not going to make him popular with his daughter, who he's fallen out with. Uh, thanks very much for now. Flo Villamino will be back a bit later on looking through the international papers for us as well. Thanks for now. Okay, we're